So to be clear, I'm going to be talking about reproductive or heritable gene editing, which I think is what most people understand when you're talking about making better babies, and which is what the policy debate that's been going on is really about. So my strong belief is that using gene editing this way in an attempt to make so-called better babies would be both wrong and dangerous. It would be wildly unsafe for those babies. Certainly that's true now and probably always. And it would um, have the terrible effect of exacerbating our already horrendous social and economic inequalities. In fact, it would throw open the doors to new kinds of social injustice. And on top of that, heritable or reproductive gene editing isn't needed for any medical reason. That's the justification that's typically given, but it's weak at best. Let's take a look at that. Say that you have a harmful gene variant and you want to make sure your children don't have the disease that it causes. Here's the thing. You can already do that and you don't have to muck around in your future children's DNA to accomplish it. In fact, everyone with a disease-causing gene can have children unaffected by it by using donated eggs or sperm and very nearly everyone in that situation can have unaffected children who are also uh, genetically fully related to both members of a heterosexual couple by using a safe and established embryo screening and selection technique. Now it's important to say that embryo selection isn't itself ethics free. It does raise thorny questions about what kind of people we'll welcome into our world. But using gene editing to create future children and future generations would amplify these concerns many times over and would carry additional grave social risks and safety risks. What reproductive gene editing does make possible is attempts at human enhancement. And even if those attempts weren't successful in biological terms, the perception that genetically modified children are biologically better than others would make the already obscene inequalities of our society much, much worse. And that is the likely societal consequence of attempts to create better babies, even if those attempts are well-intentioned. Now, some proponents of heritable gene editing, like George Church, for example, are open about wanting to eventually use it for enhancements. But that would mean we'd be putting our efforts toward building a world of genetic haves and have-nots. As geneticist Eric Lander, who is now the top science advisor to President Biden, has put it, the so-called best genomes would go to the most privileged. Now, to be sure, enhancing complex traits like IQ or musical talent, those are um, technically dubious. The traits are just too complex but supposedly enhanced children would be perceived differently and they would be treated differently. The wealthy parents who invested money and energy in them would, would make sure of that. And then the advantages that come with wealth would be attributed to genetics instead of to privilege. I think it's really far-fetched to think uh, that lots of people would be able to afford this in a society where millions of people have no access to basic health care. And if you've seen the movie Gattaca, you know how this turns out. A world in which the genes that your parents are able to afford determine where you go to school, where you can work, even your dating prospects. In the real world, Better Babies was the project of early 20th century eugenics. It may have seemed benign when U.S. eugenicists had Better Baby contests at state fairs, but we know about the ghastly outcomes of the, that project. Reproductive gene editing, of course, would be different, not enacted by government policy or coerced by state violence, but driven by commercial dynamics, marketing offers, peer pressures on parents. So the bottom line, gene editing is a remarkable scientific achievement. If used wisely, it carries enormous promise. So let's use it to treat people who are sick, not to design babies.